we are witnessing one of the most historic, most exciting and scary moments in photographic history. Photoshop has added a feature that really changes everything for how you edit. You know, we've always been able to comp in a moon or a flower or a rainbow or something, but it, it took skill, it took practice, it took work. You had to hire somebody with those skills. You had to read a book like one of my Photoshop books. This makes it simple. It's, it's, I'm just going to show you. First, you need the Photoshop beta. Go into your Creative Cloud app, select beta apps down here, and then install Photoshop beta and open it and agree to their terms. Then just grab your lasso tool here and select part of the picture that you want to change. And then in generative fill, type what you want. This is happening in real time. It takes a few seconds. It requires an internet connection. So you can't do this on an airplane probably. And now I can scroll through the three separate options. And if I don't like any of those, I can click that again to generate more options. So now my picture has a yacht. But what if we had a pretty cloud up here? That's cool, but there's still a lot of unused space in my composition here. So let's add a flock of geese flying through. Check out my different options. Each of these becomes a generative layer that I can easily turn on or off. I can even go back and generate other options just by selecting the generative layer. What does this mean for landscape photographers who've made their name by finding a nice composition like this and then just staying there? for days, weeks, months, years, what Ansel Adams did to allow the clouds and the birds and the boats to line up in the most beautiful po possible composition with nice sunlight too. Now you can just make that stuff happen. If you can imagine it, you can make it. And it's satisfying for the shortest amount of time. I already become bored with it. What does it do for the people viewing your pictures? Now they will be bombarded with impossibly amazing photos that are real photos just plus something extra and they won't be able to distinguish between those things that are imaginative and those things that are real and those of us who are real photographers out there trying to do the work we won't get the appreciation and the feedback that really is an important part of it okay let's look at some more cool things i'll pull up a portrait let's say i wanted to put this on instagram so i wanted a square aspect ratio image canvas size and let's make this 5184 pixels high and wide. Notice it added some white there. I'm going to go ahead and just select the top part here and then generative fill. I'm not going to type anything. I'm just going to press generate. If you type nothing, then it will just take its best guess at what should be there. This basically replaces content aware fill and in my testing, it does better 100% of the time. And there we go. It finished the top of her head. Now let's do the bottom here. It got blocked. I am told to view the guidelines because me generating the bottom half of her body would have somehow violated some guidelines. And Adobe is being really paranoid here. And I'm sure it's for a good reason because if you provide people a tool that can make anything they can imagine, well, you can think of the most messed up people you've ever known of and what they might imagine. <laughs> so it's not allowing me to generate the bottom half of a person. And that's weird, but let's just crop that out. Now, what might I want to change about a portrait? Maybe she wants to wear a baseball cap now. Okay, very cool. Okay, it's perched a little high. Now let's give her some sunglasses. And what about a little tattoo on her arm here? And now we can make her smile. Is this perfect? No, but as a photographer, this would have saved me a lot of time in arranging sunglasses and a hat and getting the right expression out of the model, perhaps putting in a tattoo if that's what the shoot called for. And this is just beta. So by the time Adobe perfects this, I imagine this is actually going to look perfect. I think we're probably just uh, six months away from seeing a pretty perfect implementation of this. Let's look at a different type of example. Here I'll replace the entire background. Select subject, control shift I to invert it, generative fill, airport. That's not bad, gives you a general vibe. Now let's give him a little roller bag. Now let's put Brad Pitt next to him. Oh, I violated the user guidelines. You cannot put specific celebrities in there, which is interesting because celebrities is what 90% of mid journey images are now. So let's try something different. Okay. I definitely see the resemblance. What if we go a little more generic? If you don't have a creative cloud membership, you can get it here. And if you want to learn how to actually use Photoshop, including in-depth features like these, I keep the ebook up to date. I'm currently working on this particular update, but go to northrop.photo. Uh, we have a coupon code now. And in the comments down below, tell me 
what you think of this madness. It's clearly still immature. The results are not perfect, but we can see where it's going to be very, very soon. And how does this impact photo editors and how does it impact photographers? Bye.